Now we move forward for the yet another presentation or the speaker's uh, dice. The person who is going to come up on the stage, he is an experienced director in the field of metro construction and operations. With expertise in operations management, he has held key positions in LMRC, overseeing multiple aspects of metro projects, including rolling stock, uh, signaling, telecom, and more. He joined as director ENRRS. NCRTC in 2019 and has been instrumental in fast-paced projects execution adhering to the targets set by the government. He has a strong educational background with a BE in electrical honors and an MBA focused on operation research. His notable achievements include executing the country's first 2 and 2 5 KV systems and introducing the first prototype train in Lucknow within a record time. I am talking about Mr. Mahendra Kumar, Director ENRS, National Capital Region Transport Corporation, NCRTC. Can we have you here on the stage, sir, with a huge round of applause. So, um, how I would go about in my presentation is I would share the experiences, uh, how, what are the challenges and how we have overcome in Delhi Merit Corridor. So that would be my way to present. Uh, this is just a short introduction why RRTS? Uh, why should we have RRTS? Actually, uh, at uh, bigger level, at the national level, we already have the uh, Indian Railways, our national railways. We have the national airlines. At city level, we already have the metros. So metro rail uh, that is confined to a particular city. And the last mile connectivity, auto rickshaws and e-rickshaws, feeder buses, they are already available. So the gap was between the national railway and the city level. So RRTS bridges that gap. That is the attempt to bridge that gap. So that is why we need the RRTS, basically for uh, decongesting the bigger cities. Uh, what uh, RRTS is uh, going to give us is going to be basically a trans uh, transformation in the regional mobility. How it will uh, have a transformation in regional mobility? Uh, you see, the uh, average speed of a metro is about 30 to 35 kilometers per hour. Whereas in RRTS, the average speed is going to be 90 to 100 kilometers. So if a commuter can commute, one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening. So a commuter can travel from a distance of 90 kilometers every day in the morning. So that is how it is going to bring a big transformational change in the mobility. Uh, this is just to show you how uh, RRTS uh, came up in 2005 when the original plan for NCR 2021 was uh, made. So it was recommended for RRTS. Uh, basically, eight corridors were identified then. And for phase one, uh, three corridors were, I have got 15 minutes time, so I'm going very fast. So um, uh, we, three corridors were identified uh, by the government. And those three corridors were uh, basically the um, uh, Delhi to Merat, that is Sarai Kalekha is the central uh, a station which will be the common to all the three corridors, uh, Delhi to Meerut, Delhi to Sonipat, and Delhi to um, uh, uh, Delhi to SNB. Right now, it is uh, we are going to that station, but of course, uh, it goes beyond. So um, uh, we are already physically working in the corridor Delhi to Meerut, and the other corridors are in the various stages of approval by the government. Uh, this is uh, just um, what uh, RRTS is going to offer to its users. Uh, basically, the design speed is uh, 180 kmph and the operational speed is 160 kmph. So um, the average speed would come somewhere around to 90 to 100 kmph, which we just discussed. Every 5 to 10 minutes, uh, we are going to have uh, a uh, train. Uh, so this is going to serve various traffic nodes in the corridor. The corridors are interoperable. It's unlike metros. In metros, the, uh, it are basically the, uh, it's a passenger interchange. 
but here we have the trains will change the corridor. So for longer corridors, this is um, very comfortable for the passenger comfort. We will have universal access, dedicated women coaches, uh, high capacity, comfortable journey. I'll show you how, uh, what uh, changes we have uh, conceived for making it more comfortable for the passengers. Um, weather proof, uh, reduced uh, land um, just at the median of the road. Uh, a very small portion of the land is used, giving us a very high throughput. Commuter friendly information system. This is uh, just uh, to show you again a view in line with the vision of Gati Sakti master plan. Oh, I'm sorry. Now coming to challenges. Uh, the general challenges, uh, what uh, we can expect in such a um, uh, capital in intensive project. Uh, basically, the CAPEX and the OPEX intensive project. So, CAPEX is a challenge, OPEX is a challenge. Designing a financially sustainable system, that has to be the uh, theme of any project, not only RRTS. And then, uh, selection of the suitable technology, technologies which could be used in our country, uh, that is also again a big challenge. And then, uh, unevenly developed city infrastructure, that is again a big challenge. There are very uh, clusters of houses, on, uh, the roads are wide, suddenly it goes very narrow. So making a metro in such scenarios or making a RRTS in such scenarios is again a very uh, complex uh, work. Encourage the general sentiment for use of public transport. I think this is one of the very big challenges, true not only for RRTS, but true for all the metros uh, which are coming up in the country. Now coming up, uh, what uh, we did, uh, what uh, we did for meeting our uh, capex reduction, um, the project was already sa sanctioned. We took a lot of initiatives during the pre-construction and construction stage. Um, initially, the um, government had visualized that all the three corridors would start from three different locations. One was at Sarai Kalekha, the other was at those who are familiar with Delhi. One, the first corridor, Delhi Merit, was from Sarai Kalekha. The other corridor was starting from ISBT. The third corridor was from ISBT for at, from a different location. So the first thing we did we brought all the three corridors to one common point at Sarai Kalekha. So advantages to the passengers and one common station, a starting station for all the three corridors. So uh, again, uh, advantages in capex. Reduction in the underground, wherever uh, initially it was visualized for uh, underground section, we went it for elevated section. So reducing the cost for those areas, although it called for a lot of uh, big challenges where we had uh, almost 44 numbers of HT lines um, which were of uh, even 400 kV or 220 kV or 132, 166 kV which needed a lot of modification itself was a big challenge. And all this had to be done to make them, to make the corridor elevated. Integration of uh, Merat Metro, this is another one very big thing. Initially, the government in 2016-17, there was a proposal to have a separate metro in uh, Merat. Uh, so, uh, at that stage, subsequently when uh, MRTS, RRTS was being conceived, so the last 21 kilometers of uh, RRTS has been subsumed as a metro also. So, uh, last 21 kilometers towards metro will be used as uh, towards the uh, RRTS towards Merat. will have metro as well as the RRTS. So uh, this resulted in a saving of around 6,500 crores. Uh, again, going back to uh, OPEX optimization. Uh, we had a uh, metro policy in, uh, we are covered under, NC, uh, NCRTC is covered under the metro policy. 
our uh, ministry, nodal ministry is Mahua, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So Metro Rail policy in 2007 came up, which says, which uh, gives the guidance that we should go to uh, private operators to bring in the managerial efficiencies and entrepreneurial spread. So following that, we went in for uh, that and we have DB as our partners. Uh, for the operations and maintenance and we, of course, uh, our operations are um, yet to start, but we expect a lot of uh, technical expertise and managerial efficiency to come up in operations and maintenance in our system. The rolling stock procurement, again, the, it has been clubbed with 15 years maintenance with the OEM. Again, uh, as far as I know, this is being done uh, for the first time in the country. The, we have you gone in for uh, AFC system with open loop system, the common mobility card, national common mobility card, again a vision of our Honorable Prime Minister. Uh, further, uh, a, we have taken a lot of steps which was discussed in the earlier sessions also. We have taken a lot of green initiatives. Of course, uh, they are yet to, they are still in planning stage because our operations have to take shape. We have uh, planned for blended power from renewable sources to meet the energy requirements, uh, which will lead to um, saving of about 3,000 tons through modal shift, harnessing the power from the sun directly. We have already, we are in process of setting up 11 megawatt solar plant on our rooftops of the stations. Uh, we are providing uh, EV charging stations also in our stations. Initiatives for uh, augmenting non-fair box uh, revenue. This is again a big challenge to have the financial sustainability. So we have planned for transit-oriented developments. These are the locations which we have visualized in our uh, Delhi Merit corridor, where we can have the uh, various. Uh, um, we have. I have. We have identified the locations. I can share the presentation if required. Uh, value capture financing, this has also been conceived and we are working with UP and Delhi government for uh, regulatory enablem enablement for the uh, LVC or the uh, value capture finance. Uh, leveraging technology, um, one important way to reduce the cost, uh, we have to give emphasis to the technology. So this is something which we have done uh, in our uh, Delhi Merit corridor and which will be for further our other corridors also. Project planning and monitoring tools, we have developed our own in-house uh, tool called SPEED, uh, which gives us the advantage of monitoring uh, all our uh, project works, all our contracts, everything. Uh, we have uh, various... Um, um, uh, means uh, the CCTV and PTZ camera, time-lapse video, all these are available in our system, uh, which is helpful in managing our contracts also. We have the geospatial information system, the land parcel survey, LVC study, CDE, common data environment, BIM, virtual reality, all this we are regularly using in our system track alignment and simulation. For that, we are using the open rail design software, open uh, track simulation software. This we are already using for our systems. Uh, we are using codes for all our uh, um, uh, alignments and uh, um, final uh, surveys, uh, which helps us even the track is not there. We are able to go ahead with our OHE and many alike. Again, uh, technology was again a big challenge. Which technology? This took a lot of time. Uh, which uh, technology to be adopted for various systems? So track structure was one. Again, 180 kmph was, was for the first time. So uh, we uh, brought in the pre-cast slab track designed for 180 kmph. Again, a very uh, tough task, um, uh, quite different from cast in C2 track being used on the metros, uh, requires very low maintenance and suitable even for higher speeds than 180. 
integrated track monitoring system, separate design installations, contracts we have done. Traction is again 180 kmph for the first time in the country. Again, uh, flexible uh, overhead catenary. Again, from the cost point of view, uh, we have gone in for, and for the underground, we have gone in for ROCS, rigid overhead catenary system, which has helped us in reducing our tunnel dia and again saving in the cost. Signaling, we have gone in for ETCS level 2 on LTE. Again, um, ETCS level 2 on LTE is for the first time in the world that we are going to adopt. It's already under advanced stage of testing. Uh, rolling stock, uh, we have gone in for 180 kmph with uh, 15 years uh, maintenance included in it uh, and which has a uh, comparative or lower life cycle cost. All trains are manufactured in India, in Samli, Gujarat. Uh, I was talking about the uneven and underdeveloped city infrastructure. Yes, this is a big challenge, but um, um, this has to be made, uh, um, this has to be met. We have to overcome this challenge. Uh, the narrower roads or the uneven spread of population, finalization of alignment, uh, negligible uh, intra-city transport to supplement last mile connectivity. Again, this has to be developed. Uh, scar scarcity of trained manpower, this is again a big challenge. The, we have very limited trained manpower people available in the industry for uh, such uh, works. The socio-economic opportunities which uh, it's likely to give is uh, empowering uh, masses through excess, inclusive growth, uh, social, social and economic benefits, economic benefits. I've got many other um, um, suggestions in this, but I think uh, we will skip this. Uh, this is just to show that uh, introduction, premium class. This is one... Uh, We have, uh, apart from the standard class, uh, one of the classes we have defined as the premium class. And the intention of having a premium class in the system is that we want to also attract the um, people traveling by cars. So with that intention, we have kept a premium class also. The, um, uh, the left one is the premium class and the right one is the standard class. Of course, uh, there isn't much difference except but for the oil space and uh, uh, some additional facilities like you have a place to hang your coat or you can keep your water bottle or your bag. Host of other uh, world-class facilities inside the trains, interoperable corridors to facilitate a smooth uh, uh, commuting means uh, at um, all the important locations uh, it is uh, made interoperable means you have uh, interconnectivity, intermodal connectivity at Sarai Kale Kha with uh, uh, Nizamuddin Railway Station of Indian Railways, uh, the Delhi metros, metros and at various other locations it has been connected to the, at Sarai Kale Kha it is also connected to the ISBT. So the passenger without coming on the road can go to any of the modes he desires. Uh, if uh, I summarize outcome of the RRTS, uh, connect uh, suburban uh, and urban centers and will uh, run right across the city centers, thus providing seamless multimodal transit network to the entire region. Encourage shift from private vehicles, road vehicles to a sustainable high-speed rail, public uh, transport system, of course, uh, meeting the aim of decongesting de Delhi. A fast and safe mobility system, uh, not only improve regional connectivity, but will also help promote balanced and sustainable urban development. And, uh, of course, uh, Increase in GDP of the region will always be there. We have already, this is our uh, Duhai depot. Thank you.
any questions if you have i am available i don't know i have exceeded the time or i am within time as we are running late by the time so as i said the one to one discussions and the forums are still open so uh, to felicitate uh, uh, Mr. Mahindra Kumar, I would like to request the UJM Rao, IRAS, MD, Andhra Pradesh Metro Rail Corporation Limited. Sir, can we have you on stage, please? Can we have the memento as well? Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your precious time. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a big hand. Truly a uh, presentation, truly the time to recall. We are very glad to have you on board with us. Looking forward to have a great, great, great association in future. Thank you. Thank you so much.